Who's going to go for you? You got the most writing. I've got I've got a, a, a post it with uh, three 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 lines on it for my game. Lovely. Hello and welcome to Buyer's Remorse. I'm Darren. I'm Justin. On Buyer's Remorse, we make each other play games that have been sitting in our library that we haven't played yet, and try and find out if they're worth the, whatever it was that they cost, or if they're condemned to the trash pile forever i don't know what i asked you to play but you've got a lot of notes well half of those are from something else <laughs> this is cairo okay yeah cairo with a k yeah very trendy yes cairo is a puzzle game developed by locked door puzzle and published by lupus studios limited it came out in april of 2013 it's only five dollars at base which is pretty decent it's uh, i believe according to how long to beat about three and a half hours i think it would take me longer <laughs> it took me, <laughs> me about 10 to finish this game i'm not surprised to run into that when i start talking about the actual play there don't seem to be any recent reviews but the overall is mostly positive and there are 1400 is there well, yeah. are, are there even did you see mine did i write a re review for this i don't know i didn't check I really enjoyed this game. It was a very minimal kind of graphics uh, experience. I liked it, but it's, it was hard, man. Huh. It opens up by saying it's a game by Richard Perrin, but I don't know who Richard <laughs> Perrin is. Do you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody out to make a name for themselves. You're right. I mean, the thing is, how do I describe this game? I mean, it's definitely a puzzle game. It definitely has a lot of exploration, but it's really confusing. Mm. And not just, ooh, this puzzle is hard. It's, I don't have a clue as to what I'm doing. I don't always know if there actually is a puzzle or not. I don't know exactly where I'm going. One door leads to another door leads to another door. And eventually you'll make it back to a hub or the beginning. But did you miss something along the way? It's very hard to tell. Yeah. And it's also very hard to tell sometimes if you've actually done what you're supposed to. Yeah. I mean, abstract is what I would call this game, man. I don't know what the story is. I don't know. Well, I don't think there is a story. <laughs> I don't know what, where I am. I don't know anything. I don't even know why I'm solving these puzzles or what the puzzles were. It was just like, put these triangles into, or balls into places that might do something. Like, okay. <laughs> Here's weirdly what it reminded me of was Mist. Yeah, yeah. It's a Mist light, I would say. Yeah. But without the story... With a world that's just made up of blocks and mm. triangles, and it's not meant to look like a cabin in a forest or anything like that. Yeah. Each room has its own color, but there are so many rooms. I mean, maybe the colors are slightly different, but my eyes can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of how I've gone through and described it. You start off in a gray monotone area on a throne or near a throne, or at least a giant chair. Yeah. And there's nothing but white emptiness around you. You can see a building off in the distance, but how do you get to it? Well, you just walk on the whiteness. I, th <laughs> I was so sure I was going to fall. So I was looking around for some sort of lever, some sort of, well, anything. And there's not really even, as far as I could tell, an interact button. Right. You just seem to push stuff by walking into it. You push buttons by stepping on it. You don't seem to have hands. Yeah. <laughs> I walked across. I'm in an island. And I walk around. And they're just, at least as far as I walked around, I didn't walk around the whole thing. So there's probably three more doors I missed. But I found one purple portal. These doors, they shimmer mm -hmm. as though they're magic or energy. And you just walk up to them. And then, boom, you're loaded into a new room. I'm into a purple room. I can see there's a door on the far side. There's light coming through the cracks around it. But, of course, I can't walk through. Mm -hmm. I have to walk upstairs where there is a sort of sigil. There's this, The sigil is on the wall, and it's also on a chair. And so I walked up to the sigil. I didn't do anything. I walked up and jumped on the chair and didn't do anything. And then I started pushing forward. And even though I was standing on the chair, I was pushing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're being overly kind. Mm. Yeah. And so I stepped down and realized, oh, yeah, 
there are tracks here. So mm -hmm. I just kept pushing and that created a white ball of energy on the ground floor in front of the door. Go walk into it. Door opens. Right. Great. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea that what I'm doing is the right thing. I have no idea if I'm going in the right direction. And I know from later that there's a whole other building in this gray opening area. But I don't know if it was there from the beginning or if I just went to the first one and started walking around. Well, I'll be for you to go back. Replay value. You can go and check it out. Yeah, I doubt that. <laughs> There's a bridge that's too high, but I basically walk up a ramp and the bridge just falls down into place, <laughs> which made me very curious as to what I did. Right. I guess just walking did it. And that's a big problem with the game. Like I said, I don't know half the time if it's a puzzle or if I just need to walk around and the room will sort itself out. <laughs> I went into a green room where there are many blocks that were stacked in weird ways and glowing small pyramids, and it seemed like there'd be a whole lot for me to do here, and there probably is, but I didn't figure it out. I ended up walking up some stairs and into a room which turned out to be a major hub. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of doors here, I think six doors. In the center of this hub is a cylinder of floating rings, circles. I remember that part, yeah. Okay. I think it's one of the images that they have on the store page. Mm -hmm. It becomes important later, but right now it does nothing. Yeah. I go in the first door on the left, which I think is a red door. There are just a bunch of tall pillars, and here we go again. I just start <laughs> walking up. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm looking for the puzzle. I get to the top. And a room is created out of static around me. Mm -hmm. The ceiling above me is static. The walls are static -y images. And some lady is speaking in Chinese above me. But I don't know what she's saying. Like, my language skills are not that good. And also, the images don't seem to match it. I tried walking up to all the images. They did nothing. If this is a puzzle, I failed. I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing here. I walked down a different ramp. And back up to something on the same level, and here was a doorway, a green door. So I jump in that. And in here is a floating sigil. I'm trying to walk to it, but you can't get to it because walls appear in front of you. It's basically a maze, but it's really easy. Mm -hmm. like you just have to keep walking around until you find the space where a wall doesn't appear in front of you. You get the sigil. And then you have to continue to do that to get to the other side of the room. I guess it's a puzzle, but it doesn't feel like a puzzle. Yeah. It again feels like I'm just walking around and I'll walk until I get to where I'm supposed to go. You go into what I refer to as a lavender door now, and you're walking on floating cubes to the next door. I don't think there's anything in this room. I think the game does that a lot, where either... It's been such a long time since I played it, but either... There is something there, but it's so obscure how you get it to trigger that. I mean, it's honestly something like you have to be looking at in this direction, press forward and back, left, right. You know, it's like that kind of old school cheat codes, you know, almost to make something happen. Because, yeah, there's a lot of rooms where you're just like, well, this is a waste of a room. But the puzzle will be so obscure and so abstract that you'll be thinking, oh, I just walked here and something happened. But I don't think that's what they intended. I think... You've actually done something special, but if you're like me, you don't know what it was that you've done. Yeah, and that's very much like me as well. <laughs> Half the time, I didn't know what I was doing or if I yeah. did anything, or like I said, if I missed stuff along the way. I tried jumping off a lot of times just to see if it would let me do anything. Mm -hmm. It does a weird thing where when you fall off, you get this white grid that appears around you, and it's like one, two, three... And then you get put back to where you fell from. Yeah, the countdown. It's kind of nice, I guess. So you can jump, but you don't have to really worry about jumping. So I imagine you jumped off quite a lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah, that's why your <laughs> game time is 10 hours. Yeah, maybe. But there didn't seem to be anything here. I went into a purplish room, and this is the first time where I really felt okay. Now I've got an interesting puzzle, and I can see sort of what's going on even though it was still a little confusing i was still overcooking it and trying to do different things that that's not what it's supposed to do mm -hmm. but there's a sigil you touch 
And when you touch it, a beam of light or energy flies up and or maybe down in this one. But the idea is there are concentric circles, like four or five of them. And they're at the bottom below you. You can walk over them. But there's also matching ones just above you. Mm -hmm. And there are pads all around you. If you step on them, then the picture that matches that one, that ring will start moving. Right. I think I remember the puzzle you're on about. Yeah. And I think that you're meant to just get them all going at the same time. Or maybe there's an order that they have to go in. I'm not sure. It took a few minutes. I was able to get it, but I'm not exactly sure what the solution is. Mm -hmm. Could I do it again? Yes, but in the same method that I always use of, I'm just going to try it until I figure it out. Yeah. Or I'll just do it until something happens. But I know in this room, this is one of those rooms where you can look at it and immediately go, okay, this is a puzzle and there's something that needs to be done here. So I know I shouldn't just skip on. And that is one issue with the game is I would almost rather it didn't let you go on until you had solved the important part of the puzzle. Right. Because I think I could have just kept walking around and skip this all together and would not have gotten any further. And then, of course, because I wouldn't remember where it is, it would take me forever to go back and find where it was again. But this one, there was another thing as well with this where when you stepped on the platform, you would get a nice soothing bell sound if it was the right thing to do and a buzzer sound if it was the wrong thing to do is something that will happen again to me later i think you just can't do it twice if it's already spinning you're not supposed to step on it again right okay and so. if you step on it again then maybe it stops mm -hmm. so yeah i just ran around until eventually everything started moving including some stuff above that either appeared or i didn't see before and that was pretty amazing and then you walk out of here you're going to enter a gray room with many floating cubes and then a purple door. So that one, again, I didn't know what I was doing. Purple door returns you to the hub. And now the circles that were floating, those rings are now spinning as well. So now I feel like I'm on the right track. Plus, there was some symbol that had four sections. And a light would fill up in one of the sections when you did something important. Uh -huh. And I don't think I ever got to the point in the hour or even the bit i played after where i filled up all four but i'm not sure because i i don't think there's any way or if there is i don't know it to check your status mm -hmm. it only seemed to appear when i did something right right okay so you can't be like oh what am i missing yeah, yeah. i'll keep, oh, it, I'll I keep, still keep need an eye to, out for that yeah i still have one more thing to light up if i forgot and that's the thing there's just so much going on and so much ambiguity of what's going on <laughs> that I'm just not sure that I was able to keep track of everything that I was trying to do. Yeah, yeah. But I did that. I felt like, okay, I'm making progress. I really would like there to be some sort of story here just to help my brain keep track of all the information. Now, I know that there have been some that we've done on Gaps where, gosh, it would have been better without the story because the story is not good. <laughs> but with this game, I just really have no idea what I'm doing where I'm going, and that feeling of being lost is very uncomfortable. <laughs> this is not a... I don't know. Did you find exploring this to be fun? Because I didn't. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, overall, I like this game, but if you look at it from one perspective where it's just like it's a cheap one-man developer indie game that's just weird and kind of very abstract and minimal then yeah, it was okay. But the exploration side, yeah, wasn't great for me because there wasn't really a lot to look at. I think more of this game is about, for me, if I remember correctly, it was more about just being in the world and playing with headphones and like the sounds. It was a very sensory game in that way that it had a lot of cool sounds, but not a lot to look at. So yeah, a different kind of experience in that case. But I think as well, just with the exploration, it I think there's a sort of map when you pause the game, but mm -hmm. it, it's not the kind of map that works for me. And I just right. don't quite know where I've been and what I've done. And am I going in the right direction? I don't really like exploring just to explore. Yeah. And especially, as you said, there's not much to look at. Yeah. So like when you do find something, 
maybe that was the point. Because when you do find something, even if it's just a set of four rings, you're like, oh, I found something. <laughs> it's amazing. Lower my expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that whatever you're going to give me, I will appreciate. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. After that, I went to a different room, I think from the hub. And this was a pyramid light puzzle. There's a pyramid in the middle on a plinth. Mm-hmm. And if you step on a button, there are these cubes with one corner that sheds a triangular light. And it will continue to rotate around on the x-axis. And it's pretty straightforward. Get the light onto the thing in the center. Yeah. But there's one that's broken. So as soon as you step on it, it just never stops. Mm -hmm. But luckily, some rubbish is around or some uh, debris from where it broke that you could just shove and stop the gears. Mm -hmm. And boom, done. Which... The room I had just walked in from before was a bit like an amphitheater with this giant hole in the center, which, of course, I tried to jump down, but you can't. There's something covering it. But go back to that room now, after you've solved it, the light that shines up through from the pyramid up through the ceiling is now going out of that hole. Mm -hmm. So this is a great time of, okay, I didn't know what to do in this room before. I went to the next room. I can come back and check and go, oh, yeah, I've actually done something. Yeah. That's great. I would like more of that, please. <laughs> Did you get to a puzzle? Like I said, I played this years ago. Did you get to a puzzle that was on three levels and you had to run up and down between them? <laughs> the, I was just about to get to that ah, one. Ah, okay. Is this the one with the many symbols? Yes. Yeah. All right, so... I did this. This took way longer than it should have. No, no, it didn't. It took me forever as well. (laughs) I didn't really quite understand what was going on. So what you're looking at is the same sigil you've been looking at, I think. Mm. Uh, Well, actually, there is one more just before that. So let me get to that one. That sigil again. There's another one where you're basically creating the sigil on the wall and a sort of projection. Mm. So the buttons on the ground all have pieces of that sigil and you have to step on them and not on any others or the symbol will be wrong took me a while to figure out what i was supposed to be doing with this one because i was trusting in the sounds remember Mm. before bell was good buzzer was bad yeah what i didn't notice what took way too long for me to realize is that it was always the fourth one that was the buzzer it didn't matter what order i was stepping in so (laughs) You had to get the four right or else that's when it would start over. That's when you get the buzzer. I thought it was one of those puzzles where I had to step on the buttons in the right order and listen for the buzzer and not step on that one next time. Right. But there are something like 16 buttons I'm walking around. (laughs) You really just need to draw it out and look for the right buttons. That leads you into this other one where there is a huge metal version of this sigil sitting in the room and it looks like it has a sort of window over it i went down and you can see symbols on the wall like you said it's three stories of symbols and on the ground level i could see these symbols so i've drawn them here and what i noticed was the first one seemed to have one stroke the second one two and so on one two three four five so Maybe I just need to do them in order. Right. Did that. Nothing happened. Then I said, okay, I need to make sure I've got the symbols correct. So went and did that. Was really worried about the first one. Because the first one, there are two of them. One is horizontal and one is vertical. And with the way they are, I just couldn't wrap my brain around which way should this one be. Mm -hmm. And then at some point I realized that there was actually another set of these symbols. Oh, so we're going to use all the symbols. And again, one, two, three, four, five. And the number of times I fell off trying to go up these ramps. Oh, it was just maddening. It would have taken half the time if I hadn't fallen off all the time. (laughs) But great. Okay, so let me do the second set. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing. All right. So maybe I have to start from the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, set one. One, two, three, four, five, set two. And of course, they're not in any sort of good order. You have to keep going up and down the ramps and I'm falling off. Yeah. Then I realized something that, again, I should have realized way sooner. Really 
you push the button and it goes there. It's an indicator of just where do you want it to be? Where do you want it to face? So how directly forward do you want it to face? And what angle do you want it to face? And I did that and nothing happened. And I was so frustrated. I know that I'm doing it right now. What else could it possibly be? Oh, well, it's the lever I didn't push from way back at the beginning of the room to turn the light on. It was so obviously a light puzzle. I was expecting once I did it that the light would just turn on. Yes. (laughs) Once I found that, it was almost immediate. Oh, okay, because I had it already set up. Now the light's on, and now there's a sigil to go and jump into. And that takes you back to the beginning gray area, and that's basically where my hour finished. I played a little bit more. I went to the new building that I noticed, whether it was there before or not. Again, I don't know. In there was another puzzle that I just thought about way too hard, and it was just really easy. But it just got to a point where after that, I just felt done. (laughs) There's just a series of not knowing what you're, you're supposed to be doing. There was a great point where I did get roughly after that, I think, oh, no, actually, I think I had to do this to get here, where that hub area, I had it spinning, and with the light from the pyramid thing before, that's what actually brought me down here. And that felt very good. It's like, okay, I see that I built up to this thing that was an elevator to take me down to a new room. But when I got to new gray area... Uh, starting okay. all over again? Yeah, it feels like I'm starting over again, and that it's just not as good. That's one thing that the witness did very well. You had the whole map pretty much from the beginning and the different areas, and you knew everything was sort of contained there. Right. In this sort of ambiguous area, things could just appear all the time, and it would make sense logically in the game, but how do I know how far I am or how far I've progressed? Mm. And when I get back to this point and feel like I'm starting over again, oh, it's, it's tough. And this is also the type of game where if we were playing together at the same time and we could help each other, that would be great. But on my own, I'm feeling a bit lost. And on top of that, you've got the issue of how do you look up this puzzle in a walkthrough? <laughs> it's like, I'm at this part where there's like some blocks and a, and a light. Like, how do I solve that? It's a purple room. <laughs> Unless there's a great walkthrough that has, here are all the purple rooms and what to do. And pictures of them, maybe it would help. It would have to be one with pictures. But even still, I think I would have to go look all the way through it. Mm. Overall, though, like you said, being indie, being cheap, it's good. I know I didn't pay $5 for it. I didn't. I paid one, I think. I'm guessing that's what I did as well. And yeah, it's great for that. And I think that it shows a lot of potential. Kind of curious what I else think he made Richard Parent has I'm done. I'm pretty sure he made a couple of other games in a similar vein. Very minimalistic. And there's something good to that. I just think that what's missing is a bit of guidance in some way and maybe less ambiguous puzzles less like you said if there are anything where i have to know the code to enter it i'm not gonna stand around and try for that long yeah <laughs> it's missing a bit of that oh hey you just did something great like a reward system almost i get moments of it that shape with four lights in it Mm. when that would light up i went great i did something when you can go back and see the energy pouring out of the hole that you just created that's great when you can see things spinning after you've solved the puzzle that's great i want more of that and i don't know well you you finished the game did you yeah i finished it do Um, you get more of that no i think i think i mean you do in the same sense like a little bit at a time the game's not crammed with it I think the the point of the game for me was that it was a game where there are no rules and you have to discover the rules. I think solving the puzzle itself is supposed to be the reward. Much like just like what you said when you mentioned The Witness. It's just a really minimalized version of that almost where it's like the reward is opening the door. He's not really put in anything that's like flashbang, whiz pop, you know? I don't need that, but I need something a bit more to tell me, yes, I did it. Mm-hmm. I'm getting that. But I'm getting that, I feel like, about a third of the time. Yeah, yeah. And I really need to be much more often, especially in this kind of game where you're not really sure what you're doing or what your goal is or where you're supposed to be. It'd be nice to just have more times like, yes, you did it. Or barriers to stop me if I didn't. Mm -hmm. If there was something vital, then 
maybe I need to wait here. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't even remember what happens at the end of the... I'm assuming you get credits. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, you press a button. All right, you did it. So do you think you go back then and finish it just to get those that wonderful end scene that you know that's coming? It's a fully, fully voiced full cinematic experience that you're missing out on, Justin. I've been there. It's great. She, yeah, she I definitely it. know that's not what's coming. I might. I mean, even just use a walkthrough, man, just to see what the end's like, you know, just like blitz through it. I might, especially because I just don't know where I'm going. I just hit another part where I'm in a room. Oh, this is the one. There's constellations. Okay. And there are, it seems like 20 little altars. And when you touch them, it will connect two of the stars in the sky. I don't. I should remember that puzzle. It sounds like one I should remember, but I don't. It feels like I'm going to have to make sure that the lines connect to all of them. Okay. So that means touching them all without accidentally touching another one. And just the way the camera works, you can't see the whole thing. Uh-huh. It just, that that one just did me in. I was just <laughs> like, no, you've done too much of this already. I'm... I think 70, 75 minutes in, I'm ready to take a break. I might go back, but I would probably use a walkthrough for that one because I don't want to just trial and error just my way through. Just fiddle with it for, for three hours. Yeah. That's probably what I did. Just like push every single one, map them all out, and then be like, okay, uh, let's try them. I think, I think maybe you just have to draw a picture. I don't think you've got to light them all up. I think you just got well, that might be too, but I don't see what the picture is. Maybe it's behind door number three then, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so, who would you recommend this for then, if anyone? This is definitely an indie game, so it'd have to be the indie game people. People who like puzzles, people who like figuring out the rules, mm -hmm. and like games where the rules can change, possibly. I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but I think if you're going to find any of the extra stuff, then mm -hmm. that's the type of thing. You need to be patient. Otherwise, I mean, it's not bad. I think that. I'm not sure I'd recommend the game as a whole, mm -hmm. especially since I haven't gone all the way through, but I think this is definitely the type of game where if it drops to a dollar, say, look, it's worth a dollar and it's worth an hour to try and get through and see if you want to keep going, see if you enjoy it, mm -hmm. see if you can even make sense of it. Because I imagine people who aren't into puzzle games would get into this and just turn it off. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I think that there are some people, but... As a whole, it's kind of a tough thing to recommend because it's not visually bad, but it's not visually great. Mm -hmm. So it's missing that fun part of the exploration, and it's just missing the guidance that I think a lot of people would need, including myself, yeah. to make the game truly enjoyable. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be unfair to it, but I think graphically you can have something that's not everybody's cup of tea to look at, but it would have to have that something special where... Like some games, like uh, Minute, for example, it's got two colors and that's it, and it's blocky, but it's got something going for it. It's it's something special to look at, whereas this is just pixelated blocks. So yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Tags then? How would you tag this this guy? I said puzzle, atmospheric, and ambiguous. <laughs> Ambig ambiguous, yeah, for sure. So yeah, well, probably for a dollar, but five at max. Buyer's remorse or confirmation? Well, certainly for what I got it for. And the hour overall is fairly enjoyable. I'm going to definitely say this is a confirmation. Buyer's confirmation. I thought I was going to get you that one. Really? Yeah, I didn't think you'd like it. 